the first thing whether you are born again or not i believe majority of us who are here are born again into the family of god i believe that majority of you are born again into the family of god and therefore we have to be really grateful for what we are in christ in john chapter 1 verse 11 and 12 we find for we know that we are of god i oh, know sorry the, the he came to his own but his own did not receive him verse 12 john 1 verse 12 but as many as received him to them he gave the right or the power to become the children of god so that means those who have received jesus christ as lord and savior he has given them the power or the right to become the children of god you understand so when jesus christ came to his own his own did not receive him but as many as received him to them he gave the right to become the children of god clear acha now looking at our status before christ came or before christ entered our life the status of human being or the human race is horrible and therefore human beings they have put all sort of effort to become righteous but the bible says in isaiah 64 verse 6 says that we are all together unworthy all together filthy all together dirty and unholy Isaiah 64 verse 6 our righteous acts our righteous deeds that deeds and the ways of righteousness that we have been trying to put are all together unworthy our righteous acts the acts of righteousness that human beings are trying to put on our all together unworthy and it does not qualify at all to be accepted before god because whatever may be the act of righteousness that we may try to put are not at all worthy to be accepted before god as to be counted righteous isaiah 64 verse 6 no so all the activities all religious activities all attempts of human being to become righteous to become acceptable to god will fail because they are like filthy rags they become equivalent to torn clothes not worthy to be worn understand so whatever effort religious effort human being are trying to put they will become equivalent to torn clothes not worthy to be worn so that is the status and so also i'm just dwelling in the basics okay so i believe majority of you are clear about your basics but for those who are not yet clear about the basic you can just try to remember those basics there are so many but i'm only covering only the basics for your recapitulation or for your understanding for the beginners so romans 3:23 it says for all have sinned and come short of the glory of god see romans 3:23 all of us everyone in the world we are all sinners and no one is righteous then the bible says and therefore come short of the glory of god or we all fall short of the glory of god so whatever our effort we try to become righteous will never amount to qualifying or to being accepted by god without the provision made by him okay this has to be very clear on this basic way to be very clear so whatever effort all our righteousness is useless therefore we need some intervention okay 
We need some intervention. And again, Romans 6, 23 says, the all are sinners, and therefore the wages of sin is death. The wages of sin is death. All are sinners. All human beings are sinners. And therefore our wages and the thing that we have to, our debt for our sinfulness is debt. Debt means separation from the presence of God. Separation from the life of God. Separation from the holiness of God. And therefore, unless we are given some special thing done for us, we are not at all worthy and we deserve death. The wages of sin is death. So since we all are sinners, the wages of sin is death. We have to pay the wages and that is death, that is separation from God. So this is very clear. But the same verse says, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Isn't it? It's very clear. And therefore, the basic is so clear, we are nothing, we are all together rotten clothes, rotten spiritual life, and we are not worthy to be entering the kingdom of God. But Jesus has done the intervention work. And through this, the gift of God is through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Isn't it? And how it comes by believing in the sacrificial work of Jesus Christ. Isn't it? Jesus died. Jesus had to die. Somebody has to pay the price of sin of the whole world that we know. So, because of that, Jesus Christ came and he died. The Bible says, the Bible says, John 3.3, 3, unless we are born again, we cannot see the kingdom of God, isn't it? John 3.3, 3, unless you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. So, to be able to enter and see the kingdom of God, you must be born again. Now, how to be born again? John 3 verse 5 says, unless you are born again of the water and the spirit, you cannot enter the kingdom of God or you cannot see the kingdom of God. John 3 verse 5. Oh, born again of the spirit and the water. The spirit means the Holy Spirit has to be there operating to make our salvation possible. We are convicted by the Holy Spirit that we are sinners. We need Jesus. We need forgiveness. We need to accept him. That operation, that operation work has to be worked out by the Holy Spirit. And unless we realize that, nothing will come out. But we, the, the born of the Spirit and the water, water here means the Word of God. If you'll find it in Ephesians 5.26. means washing of the water by the Word. See? Unless you're born again of the spirit and the water. Water doesn't mean that the water, normal water. But here, the water means the word of God. Ephesians 2, chapter 5, Ephesians 5, 26. Washing of the word. Washing of the water by the word. Okay? So this is water. To wash the sinfulness of human being by believing and applying. You understand? You have to believe this. Say, for example, John 3.16. You believe that, you apply that, and you receive Christ, and you have eternal life, isn't it? So that is the water. This word of God is the water which, when we apply by believing in ourselves, by appropriating the faith provision, then we are washed by the water. There is the word of God. So it has to come through the word of God. And John 6, 63 also says, John 6, 63 also says that the word, the word is, the word is spirit and life. See, this word is spirit. There is spirit in it. It is not an ordinary book, okay? It may cost 2,000, 3,000. It's not an ordinary book. But it contains the spirit of God because the Writing is done by the Spirit of God, isn't it? And therefore, it is the Spirit. And therefore, through this, eternal life comes out. 
by applying and believing, isn't it? So the word is the spirit and the life. So by believing this, appropriating the provision of Jesus Christ that he has done on the cross, we apply this and we receive life through the enabling power of the Holy Spirit. Right? So this is the basic. Romans 10 verse 17 says, faith comes by hearing the word. Isn't it? So by hearing the word, faith will come and we have to apply faith and we connect with the salvation work and we are safe. Clear? Faith comes by hearing the word. See, faith comes by hearing the word. So there are so many people who do not hear the word, who do not read the word. Last week, one young man in his 20s, an alcoholic, came to my chamber and I asked him, do you read Bible? I don't read. Do you go to church? I don't go to church. Do you have a Bible at home? He said, yes, I have. Then why don't you read? He said, ah, it is too familiar. It is always there. I see it there. It is so familiar. Nothing new, so I am not interested. That is the attitude of so many, many young people today. So many people come to my chamber. I have a chamber in Kohima, of course. And when they come to me, I ask them, do you, do you know John 3.16? And some say yes. Some, uh, then uh, many will say, I don't know also. Oh, hey, you don't have any Sunday school foundation. John 3.16, you don't know. Then another young man came again. Do you know John 3.16? Yes. You quote, for God so Lord, the world, la, 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 that, that whosoever believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Then ask him, what is the meaning of perish? I don't know. So Sunday school quoting, rhyming, they have learned, but they don't know how to apply. So many young people are there, like your peers, your friends, your younger brothers and sisters, who do not know the basics of salvation, who do not know John 3 season. So where is the scope for these people to go into heaven, to be saved? Terrific situation, I tell you, the situation is very bad. Nagas, or the populace in Nagaland, majority are Christians, isn't it? But majority do not know how the basic, the basic is really lacking, right? So, but as we have seen earlier in the first text, as many as receive him, to them he gave the right to become the children of God. John 1 verse 12, isn't it? As many as receive him, to them he gave the right to become the children of God. That, that, is, that is the basic. And when we receive, we become children of God. First John 1, uh, 3, 1 to 3. First John uh, 3, 1 to 3. Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the children of God. Isn't it? What manner of God what manner of love God has given us that we are called the children of God. See, from such a wretched sinner, we become the children of God. Wonderful, isn't it? Wretched sinner, unworthy at all, unholy altogether, become the children of God because we have appropriated our faith in Jesus Christ, or we have applied the propitiation work of Jesus Christ for our salvation. So we become the children of God. Behold, what manner of love the Father has given us, bestowed upon us, that we shall be called the children of God. Praise God. Hallelujah. We are children of God. My great God, wonderful God, such a great God. We are his children. This is the greatest status in the world. Isn't it? Do you envy president of India? Do you envy the president of America? I don't envy at all. Rather, I feel pity. I'm so sad to think of their spiritual status. After that, what will happen to them? You know that. Isn't it? But you may not be anything. You may be just an ordinary student 
struggling to survive yourself, of course, God will make a way for you if you believe. But then you may think that I'm nothing. I'm trying to be something. I'm nothing. You may be despondent sometimes. But to realize that you are a child of God. That's the greatest status, isn't it? President of India will become president for five years, isn't it? Last time I remember when Pratibha Patil was the president of India, she, I think she retired in 2012. She was staying in Rashtrapati Bhavan, okay, president's palace, a palace where the Rashtrapati Bhavan president's house is having 340 rooms, okay? Then the day she retired in 2012, she was allotted a room, four bedded room. 342 four bedded room. The status of this world is so temporary like that, right? But when you become a child of God, you become an inheritor of the entire heaven, isn't it? The Bible in Romans chapter 8, 8, 16, 17, around that, it says that we are adopted as the sons of God, as the daughters of God. Isn't it? Romans 8. And we become heirs of the kingdom. Join heirs with Jesus Christ. Isn't it? We are inheritors of the heavenly position. Okay. Inheritors of the heavenly position. We are going to inherit all that is in heaven with Jesus, our elder brother, and God, our father. Wow. What can be greater status than this? To be a child of God. Oh, I am happy. I am a child of God. In this world, I may not have much, but I am having such a status. I am a child of God. How great is our position. How lucky we are who have received Jesus Christ. Right? So, your foundation. This is, uh, that should be our basic, clear, minimum foundation by receiving Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. You become a child, you start there. Okay? Number two aspect is after we have received Christ, we have the responsibility now. We have responsibilities, right? You become a child of God, stop there. I am a child of God. When will Christ come? Oh, when will I die and I go to heaven? You can't stay like that, hand, folded hand. You have the responsibility. Ephesians 2 verse 8 to 10, how does it say? We are saved by grace through faith. Not of works. Not because you have worked very hard and you earn salvation. Not of works. It is the gift of God. Okay? It is just a gift who doesn't, which doesn't, uh, the, who does not cost money or anything to be paid for. It's a gift. It's just, no, I give you debt. Isn't it? Give is a gift. And therefore, our salvation is a gift. Okay? Salvation is a gift, purely gift by Jesus Christ because of our faith. You are saved by grace through faith. No, it's not a work lest anybody should boast, but it is the gift of God. That is the first part. Verse 10 says, verse 10 says, Ephesians 2 verse 10 says, We are his workmanship, created for good works. You understand? We are God's creation. And we have entered into the family of God. Now, good work. Where do the good work? Okay. Not because you are saved, sit for your time to go to heaven. No. Created to do something good. Okay or not? You have to do. So, when you are saved, you have not, you have not done anything. You are saved and you are not doing anything for the kingdom of God. No. Then, there is a big quarry. There is a big quarry. There's a big doubt whether you're really saved or not. Okay, Charles H. Spurgeon, one of the best preachers in the world, he said, if you have no wish for souls to be saved, then you're not saved. See, if you have no wish for others to be saved, that means you're not saved yourself. And he again re-emphasized saying, and be sure of that. 
See? Terrible, isn't it? So you said, I'm a born again believer. Praise the Lord here, you sing. But if you have no burden for other sinners to be saved, to bring sinners into, your king, into the kingdom of God, you're not saved. Be sure about that. Because if you have tested the love of God, known the love of God, the love of God for which that love which prompted Jesus Christ to come and die, then there is love which has been poured, which has been poured into our heart. Romans 5 5. Okay? Romans 5 5. The love of God is shed abroad into our heart. That is all King James Version. But again, the new version says the love of God is poured into our heart. Okay? So when we receive Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit convicting us, and when we receive Jesus Christ, the love of God comes into our heart. And our heart is filled with love. Love for God, love for sinners, love even for enemies. See, the standard set by Jesus Christ, love your enemies, pray for them. Do not revenge. Okay. And you have to pray for them. That's what Jesus said. So love for God. Love for sinners. I want them to come to Christ. Love for sinners. And love even for your enemies. That is the standard. And love for the kingdom of God. We are here this evening to do the kingdom's work. We love the kingdom. And therefore we are here. So the love of God, Romans 5.5, 5, that, that has been poured into our heart. If that is there, you will not keep quiet. You will go about, move around, tell people about the gospel. Tell your friend, tell your classmate, tell your neighbor, tell the people in the street. Okay, once upon a time, I was working as a medical specialist in Tuinshan Civil Hospital. It was around 1984, 5. 84, we were married. 85, 6 perhaps. I, I went into Tuinshan Market to do street preaching. <laughs> and my wife find it so funny. She was feeling a little shy on my behalf. <laughs> on my behalf, I don't know whether she'll be happy to hear that. <laughs> She's sitting there. And she said, ah, I think it doesn't look so nice. <laughs> it doesn't look so nice, but I did it because I love the Lord, and I want even the buzzer people, plain people, or whoever, to know, to hear the gospel and to be saved. That is what happens when you have the love for Christ, for the kingdom. Anyway, so if we have love for the kingdom, love for Christ, we will have the love for the kingdom, love for sinners. Isn't it? Agree or not? Then let's do that. Love for sinners, tell them about Christ. Then again, in uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 17, 18, 19, 20, one, like that. 2 Corinthians 5, 17, one verse, which we know. If anybody is in Christ, he's a new creature. You know, no? He's a new creature. Behold, all things are new now. All things have become new. Everything has become new. Okay. Then after that, what does it say? You, therefore, you are now given the ministry of reconciliation. Okay? After you are saved, you are given the ministry of reconciliation. You understand? After you are saved, you don't have to keep quiet. You are given the ministry of reconciliation. You have to do the work of reconciling people, sinners, to Jesus Christ and bring them into your kingdom and also then Next verse goes on to say, you are given the word of reconciliation. This word of God for reconciling people, you take this and move around because we are given the word of reconciliation, ministry of reconciliation. And it goes on to say, you are ambassador for Jesus Christ as ambassador for Christ. You have to go around and tell people about the gospel, right? So, this is the responsibility God has given us. And if you really love God, you cannot keep quiet. You know, the example of 
Peter and Jesus encountering there in Rome, uh, uh, John 21, 15 to 17. Jesus called Peter. Of course, it was after resurrection. When Peter was restored, forgiven for denying Christ, for telling lies about Christ. Now, Peter, I mean, Jesus called Peter. Jonas, Peter, Simon, son of Jonas. See, okay. Peter, son of Jonas. Why he's calling him the father? It is to re-emphasize. I'm telling you, not this Peter, not that Peter, not that Simon, not that Simon. You're the one. Peter, son of Jonas. Do you love me or not? Do you love me or not? Tell. Now Peter is cornered. He, yes, yes, Lord, I know you. I love you. You know that? Then Jesus said, feed my sheep, feed my lamb. He started with feed my lamb. The lamb means young believers, isn't it? The next day, the third, second one, he said, Peter, Jonas, Simon, son of Jonas, do you love me? Do you love me? Yes, Lord, I know. Do you know I love you? Feed my sheep. Feed my sheep. Teach them. Present them the gospel. Nurture their faith. Feed my sheep. Again, third time. Peter, do you love me? Then that time he, be, he became so much struck with emotion. Are, what is this? Oh, Lord, you know that I love you. Why? He became so emotional. I tell you three times I want to reinforce that if you really love me, you have to take care of my sheep. See, how many sheep are perishing? 100 sheep, one was perishing. Even for that one sheep, the good shepherd went all around in the midst of thorns and jungles and brought it back, isn't it? That's what God desires us believers to be doing that. Okay, you have to feed the sheep. Otherwise, it is never complete. We cannot prove that you really love the Lord. Okay, that's one. Then another one, John chapter 20, verse 21 to 22. Okay, Jesus, after resurrection, appeared to the disciples. Okay, that they were shocked or excited with joy and something incredible happened. And suddenly Jesus appeared and unto them. And he knew their psycho. He knew their mental status. They were shocked. Frightened in desperate, hopeless situation. Then what he said? Peace I give unto you. Peace I live with you. See, they were lacking peace at that time. And that which was needed, Jesus said, Peace I give unto you. Isn't it? Huh? Then they were filled with peace and joy. And in such a time when their master, the shepherd, was gone and dead, they were so worried, and the first thing Jesus said, peace I give unto you. So Jesus is the answer, even in a situation when you are facing like this, a difficult time, when there is no other hope, Jesus said, peace I give unto you. My dear students, my dear experience for business or post or service or whatever, peace I give unto you, said Jesus. Accept that, apply it in your life. But then what he said, he, he said, as the Father has sent me, so do I send you. You understand? Christ has been sent by the Father, and now Christ is sending us. You understand? He's sending you. He's sending you. He's sending me here to tell you this in the same way. You are being sent by Jesus to tell others. Not dead or not. You got it. You can't keep quiet. You can't keep quiet. You got to be doing something. You got to be telling. Don't sit quiet. You know, the famous D.L. Moody, the preacher, those days, the best preacher in the world at that time, about nearly 200 years ago. So he, he was asked to become so popular in America, 
people propose, Modi, you are so popular. Why don't you contest to, to become a president? You'll be, you'll be sure become, you'll be elected. And he said, I have a greater cause than to become a president. Okay, Pastor Joseph, position is better than President Murmu or Modi. Modi is here. Oh, so many people in the Mapur ground oh, filled with awe and wonder. But remember, this young pastor is greater than that Modi. Okay? Greater than Modi, right? And so you, if you become an ambassador of Christ, you're greater, bigger. Okay? Don't underestimate your status. You're a child of God, ambassador of Christ, a servant of God, preacher of the world, has the greatest status. My dear children, be happy that you're a child of God. You have such a wonderful, wonderful status. One thing. Again, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9 says, You're a chosen generation. You're a royal priesthood. A holy nation. God's own very special people. That you may proclaim the praises of him who call you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Wonderful, wonderful. You are a chosen generation, a royal priest, a priest of the heavenly royal king, royal one. What a status. What a wonderful position. What a wonderful responsibility. Okay. And uh, one thing before that. Jesus told them to wait for the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 1, verse 8, isn't it? Wait, wait. You should be ready to do that. But wait, wait, wait. What? Wait for what? The Holy Spirit will come upon you. Till the Holy Spirit come upon you, you keep on praying and waiting upon him. Kneel down, praying, crying out for the power of the Holy Spirit to be able to do his work. Wait, Acts chapter 1, verse 8, isn't it? They were waiting, waiting, praying, praying, and mighty Pentecostal revival came, isn't it? And after that, they were never the same again, isn't it? That timid, uh, emotional, unstable, hot-tempered Peter now totally changed, and in one message, 3,000 were converted. Such is the dramatic change that is brought about the power of the Holy Spirit. Nothing but the Holy Spirit, isn't it? So that is possible. You have to be equipped with the Holy Spirit to do that work. In John chapter 20, 21, 22 also, it is mentioned there. John 20, 21 to 22, Jesus appeared to do, as I have said, as the Father has sent me, I also send you. Okay. Then what he, what he did? Then he breathed upon them. He gave them the breath from heaven, the heavenly breath, the power of God. Breathed upon the disciple. Then what he said? What he said? Receive the Holy Spirit. See? He said, I am sending you. And then he breathed. Then I'm sending you. See, you know, you know the connection? The Holy Spirit is breathed upon the disciples. And now you go and tell. You know the sequence? So in order to be able to do effectively, you have the Holy Spirit, you require the Holy Spirit, right? So this responsibility. Remember, the greatest work on earth is to show the way to heaven to somebody. Okay. The greatest work on earth is to show the way to heaven to somebody. There is no greater work than this. Okay? Agreed or not? Yeah. Yeah. Then, the greatest joy is to do soul winning. You know, John 15, there are three losses, isn't it? The lost coin, the lost sheep, 
and the lost son. When all these three losses were found, what a joy and celebration in all these three occasions. Isn't it? So the greatest work on earth is to find soul coming to God, you doing some evangelical work, soul winning work, personal evangelism or group evangelism, whatever, and you bring soul to Christ, then you are the happiest. You have the greatest joy and you have the reason to celebrate in the most glorious way. Okay, so, so the last point, I will try to wind up. The last point is power, as it is already you know, discussed. Now, application of the power. Okay, number three is the application of the power. Now here, there's a bulb here. How it is, it is burning? It is because connect, it is connected with the power, isn't it? Electric power there, generator or transformer or whatever it is. The moment that generator power is switched off, it is dark, it is nothing. It is just a bulb, it is nothing. But the moment you switch on, tick, and the light comes. We are similar to that. We are just electrical bulbs only. We're nothing. But through us, through the bulb, whether it is power is 9 or 10 or 40 or 100, whatever it be, what? You are a bulb for Jesus Christ. And the moment it is connected with the Holy Spirit, with God, then you are there. The power is there through you. So, God's power is met available to every believer. Therefore, you know Roman, uh, Matthew 28, verse 18 to 20. The last, the, the last speech, the last point Jesus conveyed. You know, the first point Jesus conveyed to the disciple when he, disciples when he recruited them. Come, I will make you fishers of men. Come, come, come. Why he is calling? Why he was calling? I will make you fishers of men. Come, the purpose of calling the disciples, come, I will make you fishers of men. Isn't it? Now he's going and he said, go, I'm going up to heaven. Now you go and make disciples of all nations. No, Mark 16, 15 to the end. Matthew 28, verse 18 to 20 there said, all authority is given to me. See, all authority is given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations. You have to go. Sitting here in this Kermo Hall area, will not do. You have to go. You have to go, actually. I also went today. I went from Kohima to Dimapur today to do this work. I came down from Dimapur. You have to go and do something, isn't it? Maybe in the market there. I have experienced sharing the gospel in that railway colony among the uh, this, uh, dwellers there, maximum mayas, no? And preach with Mike, they are la, 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 la. Big crowd came, big crowd came. It's open street preaching, no? Several years ago, maybe 20, 20 plus years ago, I did that, but I don't know how effective, but I tried to do that. I went there, no? I went to the railway colony to do that. You have to go. Why not some of you go and do, try that? Railway colony, big crowd, Del Delhi Bazaar, evening Bazaar, even here, just here. The market is so big here. Tell about Jesus. You can. You cannot just sit quiet. You have to go. Because God says you go. And then, uh, in Mark 16, 15 to 18, 18, we, we, we find all power is given them. These are the signs that will accompany the believers, isn't it? You will cast out demons, you'll pray for the sick, you'll be healed, and you'll speak on, in different tongues. Even the snake, when you lift up, it will not bite you. When you take poison, you will not die. Isn't it? Sadhu Chandar Singh. You read the book of Sadhu Chandar Singh, testimony. He encountered Jesus Christ from a Sikh family, Sikh Hindu family. He got converted, he accepted Christ. The family, family wanted to kill him, gave him poison, right? He vomited out and he survived. He became a great preacher, Sadhu Chandra Singh. 
Okay, any bookstore here, Bible bookstore, you go there, Sadhu Sundar Singh. Wonderful, wonderful. So, he took poison and he was not killed. The same Mark 16 it is mentioned here. The promise is true. Practical. It happens. Okay. Then again, all power is given to me, Jesus said. I, I, I will give you a little part, a little portion. You, you try to use this power, but majority of power is mine. Jesus didn't say that way, okay. All that he did, it is given to us also. All that. You can do all. Everything through Christ. No? Matthew, uh, I mean, in, uh, uh, Philippians 1, 13. Philippians 4, 13. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. But you know, many believers think that I can do a small thing through Christ who strengthens me a little. <laughs> the word says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. But you said, I can do a little bit through Christ who strengthens me partially. <laughs> that attitude is there no, for many believers. No? But the Bible says, I can do all things. I can face all situations. Some versions may be like that. But King James, I prefer. I can do all things to Christ who strengthens me. How wonderful, isn't it, the word of God? Endless amount I can go and speak. In. Pastor Joseph told me, you can speak one hour. Oh, Pastor Joseph, if I speak one hour, next time they will not call me. They will say, oh, uncle has come. It will be too long. Oh, we'll go away. So that shouldn't happen. So I'm getting a little worried. Though I have to speak, I, I have a lot of points, but I will wind up because I'm worried about the future. <laughs> right. Anyway, so uh, here in Luke chapter 10, verse 17 to 17, you see, Luke 10, 17, you will find Jesus had 12 disciples. Then he, he had nominated a sub, sub committee type of disciple, sub disciple, so to say, 70 were there again, all right? So what happened? 70, he sent the 70 out, right? And they came back rejoicing. Oh, Jesus! Oh, you're, you're really wonderful. This trip was so good, so profitable. We went out. And even the demons, when we rebuked, they ran away. Oh, Jesus! Yeah. See? And the demons are oh, subject to us. Jesus said, I have given you power to trample over the scorpions and the servants, serpents. See, nothing will harm you. You will be the overcomers. You will be the, 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 the winners. See, no? Everything was, you know, given to them. So they did it and they were so rejoicing. But at the same time, Jesus said, but don't be excited about that only. Yes, you have been given that power. But still greater power, e, greater happiness is because your names are written in heaven. So wonderful, Back to the point, you become a child of God, isn't it? You become a child of God. So wonderful. So great is our God. Again, in Acts chapter 3, verse 6 says, John and Peter went out after the revival, after the Pentecost, after receiving, after being equipped with the power of the Holy Spirit. They went out into the temple. They went out and uh, a beggar um, a beggar, a lamb, or the, must be having polio, I believe. Uh, bah, bah. You come across in the railway station, like that somebody was asking for the arms, and Peter, John, these people, followers of Christ, they didn't have any material thing, maybe just traveling on foot most of the time, no bus fear, nothing, of course those days bus fear was not needed. Peter said, silver and gold, we do not have anything. Okay, first part. But what I have, we give you. And that is in the name of Jesus. Rise up and walk. And the result, you know that. Instantaneously, he was healed. Started jumping and leaping. Le leaping. Okay, this is the power. They said, nothing, 
we do not have any pocket money also. Okay? We do not have any pocket money also. Nothing. I'm sorry. But what I have is in the name of Jesus, I give you. Walk, get up and walk. See? In the name of Jesus, we have everything, okay? So my dear young believers, in the name of Jesus, you can do so much, so much. Believe in the name of Jesus.